Seeing as how David Tennant got the most Christmas specials out of any actor to ever play the Doctor, these next couple of videos are going to be a bit shorter than his video was. In fact, Matt Smith's 11th Doctor and Peter Capaldi's 12th Doctor each only got four Christmas specials apiece. I find Matt Smith's first two Christmas specials to be particularly interesting as they are basically Doctor Who-ish retellings of actual Christmas classics. The first, A Christmas Carol, is literally based on A Christmas Carol, and the second, The Doctor, The Widow, and The Wardrobe, is very clearly based on the very Christmassy The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. The first of the two sees the Doctor helping a curmudgeon old man who controls the clouds on an alien planet to become a better person so that he will use his cloud-controlling machine to ensure the safe landing of another space cruise liner type ship that not only has the Doctor's companions on it, but also 4,000 passengers who are all very close to dying. It's one of the rare occasions where the Doctor actually uses his time travel capabilities to change the past of someone who he is directly interacted with in the present, that being this old man. His name was Kazran. But in the context of this story, it works. The Doctor makes only the minimal number of changes that he needs to make this person's life better, and by extension he's making the lives of everyone on the planet, as well as the 4,002 people on the ship, all of their lives better too. And it's super neat, you get to see how this guy changes as some of his more hurtful memories of the past are changed and he starts to incorporate those changes into who he is. Even then though, it takes slightly more extreme measures to finally change him for good, and even then the Doctor still has to reason up a different way to save the passengers on the ship. It is a Doctor Who episode through and through, but it's a Doctor Who episode which is thematically very similar to a Christmas classic, and so it works super well as a Doctor Who Christmas special. The first proper Doctor Who Christmas special, I think. In fact, it's almost eerie how well it works. One of the themes of the episode is even how the past generation can negatively affect the current generation, which is something that I eat right up. Like, I think there are better Matt Smith episodes than this one, but I really like this one. And I like the next one, too, The Doctor, The Widow, and The Wardrobe. This is during a period of time where the Doctor's companions, Amy and Rory, thought that he was dead, or at least he thought that they thought he was dead. And he was off sulking like a little baby, as the Doctor does, and just thought it would be better for them to think that he was dead. And in the midst of this, he ends up being, I can't remember what term was actually used in the episode. Basically the nanny to some kids whose father is away fighting World War II. Like, their mom's still there, but the dad's away and he's actually dead. He was killed in action and the kids don't know about it. And the Christmassy elements in this one are particularly appropriate because it is again set at Christmas time and also the doctor to help these kids cope with the fact that horrible shit is happening right now in the world, and that eventually they are going to find out that their dad's dead. He uses his ability to traverse space to specifically find a place for them to visit where Christmassy things occur naturally. A truly magical location. There's the classic Doctor Who misunderstood alien villain to fight, as well as a secondary villain that works as a stand-in for the evils of corporatizing holidays, and a touching family-centric ending for the family that he's there helping to take care of, as well as a touching family-centric ending for the Doctor. This ties back into some past episodes just a little bit. Not enough that you can't pick up everything that you need to know from watching the episode, but just a little bit. But at the end of the episode, the Doctor does go to see Amy and Rory, recognizing that they are his family, and for the first time in centuries, he is in a place where he actually wants to spend Christmas with his family. It's a fantastic scene, I think one of the most moving of the modern era, and it really bumps the Christmas spirit of the episode right up to 11. The next two are a little more superficially Christmassy, like there's still very Christmas elements to them, but you get the sense that the general story that they told could have been told in any other episode of the show. The first of them, The Snowman, actually ties back into an earlier episode. The Doctor has hidden himself away in London in the late 1800s, sulking over his permanent separation from his companions. He has retired from 
saving people and planets and the rest of the universe. Until a woman who, from what he can tell, is the exact same woman who he met in another time and place, reborn in this era, spurs him to start being the Doctor again. And so there are elements of this episode which tie back to earlier episodes. There's this woman, Clara Oswald, as well as some friends of the Doctor who exist in this time period. But the elements of this episode are easy enough to piece together that the episode does still pretty much work as a standalone episode. And the villain of the episode is a thing, it's a sentient snow, I can't remember what they exactly called it. Maybe just like psychic snow or something that can duplicate the forms of people. It's controlled by something called the Great Intelligence, and it forms itself into killer snowmen who menace the Doctor and the people of this town. And in theory it would be a very interesting kind of horror spin on Christmassy elements, but it just ends up making for a kind of forgettable villain. Clara ends up kind of stealing the show here, overshadowing everything else in the episode, which ends up being a problem later when her story arc is resolved because it, she steals the show a lot in her earlier appearances. Her entire arc steals the show a lot in her earlier appearances and the payoff just wasn't as great as I think everybody was expecting it to be. And while the psychic snow and the snowmen are Christmas elements, you get the sense that the great intelligence could have done the same thing with sand or wind or dust or I don't know, storefront dummies, like the, uh, what are they called, the Autons? Like, you kind of get the sense that it, it could have done something like that, too. So the Christmassy elements aren't necessary here. They feel tacked on, which, after the last two Matt Smith Christmas specials, is kind of a bummer. The final of his Christmas specials kind of ends up feeling the same way. It ties back to earlier stuff in the show, and also, like The End of Time, it also tries to resolve a long overarching story arc that the Doctor had been going through for several seasons now. Matt Smith's version of the Doctor knows where he's going to die, and apparently it's where the Doctor as a whole is going to finally die for good. A planet called Trenzalore, and it turns out that on that planet there is a town called Christmas, and the Doctor makes the decision to stay in Christmas and protect Christmas to his dying breath and he spends I don't know countless centuries doing this and it's pretty emotional and pretty touching like you see him age and it does hit pretty hard and they try to present the entire story like a fairy tale with like little insertions that are supposed to catch you up on all of the plot elements that are being carried over from previous episodes but it still doesn't feel standalone enough for me to call it a successful Christmas special, and once again, the town called Christmas didn't have to be called Christmas. It is cool, because the Doctor, he ends up bringing the things here that he has to protect the town from. It's cool to see him step up and take responsibility for that, and effectively decide to sacrifice himself to protect the people in this place, despite the fact that they're no more special than any other people anywhere else, and I guess that is in the Christmas spirit or whatever, but you really do feel like this could have been a proper season finale rather than a Christmas special and the story would have still worked. Still, I think the Matt Smith Christmas specials round out to be pretty great. The first two, them being so Christmassy, really bump up the score of these four overall, and I will say despite the fact that the town on Trenzalor didn't have to be called Christmas, seeing the Doctor grow old defending Christmas itself was pretty neat. That in and of itself is pretty Christmassy. It's a little gimmicky, but I acknowledge that and accept that I like it despite the gimmick. That just leaves Peter Capaldi's Christmas specials, and you guys should know if you've watched my past Doctor Who reviews that I have very mixed feelings about Peter Capaldi. Next time, let's see if those mixed feelings carry over into the Christmas specials that he headlines. All of that said, though, guys, I'd like to know what do you think of Matt Smith's Christmas specials, if you have seen them. Let's get a discussion going in the comment section down below, or over on my Discord, link in the description. But either way, this has been AJ22, and I will talk to you guys later.